Hi there, this is Phil Legged from Pusher. In this screencast, we'll be covering using private channels. Now, private channels offer a way of authenticating subscriptions to the channel. This is really useful when you want to restrict who can access data within your application. So, for instance, if you want two users chatting to each other over one channel, you could create a private channel and make sure that only those two users can subscribe to it. Uh, the Pusher libraries and Pusher itself have introduced an authentication mechanism to make this possible. For this workshop, we'll be using the real-time web workshop. Uh, the source for this is available in GitHub, github.com slash pusher slash real-time hyphen web hyphen workshop. Before we get started, I wanted to have a quick look at the existing code. So from the last tutorial, I've done some refactoring. So the start of this tutorial the code's a little bit different, simply because the um, the organic way that we created the code previously, we didn't cover any kind of refactoring processes. So I've refactored for the start of this, and I just thought I'd cover cover what's happened. So first thing to know is that um, index.html from the previous one's been called an index.php. Now this allows us to obviously bring in some configuration and, and information from, from the, the server, so things like, as I said, configuration. Um, it also lets us, uh, so here you can see we've actually, we're pulling in some configuration from um, these defined app key and channel name values. So there are a couple of things worth, in, worth mentioning. Um, the channel name is the thing that we subscribe to and the thing that we publish to. So um, we subscribe to it on the client and we publish to it on the server. So we share that information now via configuration. We've seen the app ID, app key and app secret before. Um, if we go into the JavaScript, you'll see there's now an app, app.js that's included rather than it being in line within the HTML. Um, you can see here we use config.pusher.appkey and config.pusher.channelName. I've also moved the CSS into a CSS folder in styles.css and included it in the indexed PHP file. Um, and you can also see when we trigger messages, um, we use the channel name constant. Okay, so as I said, the point of private channels is to restrict access to who can subscribe to a channel. So this can be really useful if we're having, say, a one-to-one -one chat, or we want to restrict who can access status updates from a particular user. So let's have a quick look at the documentation. Now, documentation provides um, an overview of the authentication process. So here we create a new pusher object in the sequence diagram. The WebSocket connection is created to pusher. Pusher returns a socket ID. Now, that socket ID uniquely identifies that connection to pusher. Um, there, fr from there, we subscribe to something. Now, we subscribe to a private channel. Now, we use convention here over configuration to determine what a private channel is and how to identify a private channel. So a private channel just has a private hyphen prefix. Um, once that subscription call is made, the library, in this case, the Pusher JavaScript library, makes a callback to an authentication endpoint on your application. Um, so this in the push JavaScript library, this is an AJAX request or a JSONP request. Within that request, which is a post request, it passes a channel name and a socket ID. Um, if it's a JSONP request, it also passes a callback um, JavaScript function name. Um, your authentication endpoint should then authenticate that user. So, so check the session, check the user has been um, authenticated and, and is, is logged in, and then you sign the um, subscription request, return an authentication um, signature, and then a subscription is made to Pusher for that channel from the JavaScript library, passing the channel name and the signature. And then from that, during that authentication process, it means that Pusher knows that your server has authenticated that subscription, your application, because the signature uses a, a private, um, a secret key that only your server and Pusher knows about. So, um, to change the application to use private channels is as simple as prefixing the name of the channel with private. While we're here, we should also update the 
app ID, app key and app secret. Otherwise we obviously won't be able to connect or publish information. So now if we jump into the application, go to the real time web workshop, private start and we'll see the app. If we open up the JavaScript console, Okay, so you'll see we've connected and then we're getting this failed to load resource. The server respond, responded with the status of 404 not found. This is because um, if I reload the app, you'll see that along with the resources for the application being loaded, there's a call to slash pusher slash auth. Now this is the default endpoint for um, the authentication call when a private channel is subscribed to. So the next thing we need to do is write our authentication endpoint. So let's create a, a new file, which is which we'll make auth.php. And secondly, we want to update the default endpoint, the, the, the endpoint that's called to a different URL. So if it had gone to pusher slash auth, it would have gone um, right underneath the real time web workshop. We want it to go into start auth.php. So by defining a, a relative URL, that's where it will go. We've got our auth.php file. If we jump into our app, Read that, reload the page. We'll see auth.php is called, but obviously we're not responding with anything yet. So we want to do two things here. We want to include our config. We want to include the pusher library. We want to create a new pusher instance. So we've got the code there from elsewhere. And the PHP library provides a way of creating the signature for you. So down the bottom here, we use the pusher instance. So we're going to create the auth. It has a function called socket auth. And it takes a socket ID and a channel name. No, we don't have that yet. But if we go over here and look at the, the auth request, you'll see this form data sent, which is socket ID and channel name. Now form data means form data means a post. So we can get socket ID from the post. And we can get the channel name as well. And finally, we have the auth, so we just need to echo it back. And so as I said earlier, the, this auth signature is um, created based on socket ID channel name, but also these credentials that you've passed in previously. So the app key, app secret, and app ID. The app secret is the key thing. It's something that only Pusher and your server know about. So if we jump back over to the app again, refresh, you'll see the post was okay. We can see that we've got a response, which is some JSON and all signature. And if we jump to the console, we actually got an on all, uh, so the subscription failed. So let's try and work out why that's the case. If we jump to here, have a look at the auth, we've got, um, it could very easily be, yeah, I know what it is. Um, it's because this takes a, channel name and the socket ID. So jump over here. That's all okay. Have a look at the console. 
and there we go subscription succeeded so we're now subscribed to a private channel now obviously at the minute we're just letting anybody in so what we want to do is we want to make sure that only authenticated users are allowed in so to do that let's create a new functions.php We'll have user logged in. Um, and for them, what we'll do is we'll t return false to start off with. And in here, we'll include the functions. If the user isn't logged in, then we want to say that they're not authorized for access. I guess this else part isn't really required. Um, let's make sure we res respond saying that, that that wasn't allowed. Best be American. Okay, so now if we jump over to the app again, reload, we'll see we're getting a 403 forbidden back. Um, if we change the the logged in function to return true and reload the page, we're allowed in again. Now let's add really horrible but uh, basic idea of. Um, authentication what we can do is let's check the let's check that there's a um, auth query parameter with a value of one just to make sure that they're authenticated and um, obviously that's uh, <laughs> the worst security ever so we'll check the HTTP referrer to see if it has auth equals one. Okay, so if we refresh the page right now, and we're getting a 403 forbidden, but if we have add auth equals, equals one, um, where the subscription succeeds. I best just demonstrate the, the example does work. Okay, so the app's still working, we're authenticated. If this guy over here doesn't authenticate and I send a message from the left, then because the guy on the right hasn't authenticated, he won't receive the message. Okay, so that's an overview of private channels.